Hey guys, Lieutenant Mitt here with another video on Anki. Now, so far the videos on this channel have been about Anki add-ons that I've written myself, but there are so many other fantastic add-ons out there that I thought it would be a good idea to just create a video series where I showcase some of them to you. And the way I want to structure this series is to just go over specific areas of Anki, for instance the node creation process or reviewing cards, and then showcase maybe two or three different add-ons that I think can be very useful in improving that specific experience. Now this video itself will serve as a general introduction point. The things I want to cover in here are just very general information about how to find add-ons, how to install them and remove them, but also some more advanced topics, for instance, how to manually install and remove add-ons, and also how to configure them by editing their source code, which can be useful in some cases. And as the last point, what I want to showcase is just a few resources where you can actually learn how to write your own add-ons. Okay, so let's get right into this. The first thing I want to cover is how to actually find out which add-ons are out there. And the best resource here is to just head over to the Anki Web Add-ons page. And you can go to that page right from within Anki, just by going to Tools, Add-ons, clicking on Browse and Install, and then clicking on Browse. And this will open up this page right here, which contains an, an overview of all the available add-ons for Anki, at least for the most case. There are some add-ons that are not available on Anki Web, but I will leave them out for now. So this list can be sorted by the title of the add-on so that you can find them alphabetically if you want to. The sorting by the rating is the default sorting, but what you can also do is just sort the add-ons by the day they were modified. This can be useful, first of all, to find new add-ons. As you can see, there are pretty much new add-ons being released every week. But this is also useful to just um, get a grasp of which add-ons have been updated recently. Um, this is actually one of the weaknesses of the add-on system in Anki. There is no way of actually staying up to date with add-ons other than going back to this page and just seeing if there have been any modifications to the add-ons that you're using yourselves yourselves. There are no notifications in Anki or something like that. You have to do this manually. For some add-ons you might find Twitter links in the descriptions which you can use to just stay up to date with the changes to that add-on but for the most case you have to follow the um, page here and see if any modifications have been posted recently. Okay let's go over to actually installing an add-on. Um, this is pretty easy actually. You just The only thing you really have to do is just head into the add-on page and then locate the add-on code, which should be right here in the download section. Just copy that code and then go back into Anki and paste it right inside the install, install add-on window. And as soon as you click OK, Anki will then download the add-on and prompt you to restart it. And having restarted Anki, you will then see that the add-on is installed. And the way you can confirm this is by going to Tools add-ons and then checking whether the add-on entry is listed here. Removing add-ons is just as easy. You just have to go to the add-on, click delete and once again restart Anki. And if you now go back into the add-ons add -on menu, you'll see that that specific listing is not it's no longer in the list, which means that the add-on has been removed. Okay. One other thing I wanted to cover is how to get support for issues that you might be facing with add-ons. Now, of course, authors try to construct their add-ons as um, bug-free as possible, but of course, there are always some problems and issues that can't be tested for. And at some point, you might run into an error message or something similar. Well, the best way to handle this is to go to the add-on description and see whether the add-on whether the author has provided any links that um, direct you to support resources. For instance, here for Awesome TTS, there is a link to the Anki Aeron's forum, and the author suggests that you just post a new thread in here if you face any issue. For other add-ons, for instance, for image occlusion, and for other add-ons that I've released myself, I like to create um, just a general thread in the add-ons section on the support forums where you can just post all of the issues and problems that you might be facing. And I usually try to respond to these support requests as soon as I can. The thing that you shouldn't do is to use the rating section to um, post issues and problems that you might be facing. 
The thing with this rating section is that the add-on author has no way of getting into contact with you. And for a lot of issues, there, you really need to um, get into a troubleshooting procedure with the user. user. You need to ask them um, which steps exactly they um, undertook in order for the issue to occur. And if you don't have that information, then it's very, very difficult as an add-on author to actually track back that issue and find a way to solve it. So with that in mind, try to not post bug reports in a rating section, but rather find another way to contact the add-on author. And only if you if you wait maybe one or two weeks and there has been no response by the author, only then consider leaving a rating uh, outlining the issue that you might be facing. This is both in the interest, in your interest for it, of course, um, in getting the add-on fixed, but it's also good for the add-on authors because it can be quite discouraging when you get reviews like that and you have no way of actually fixing the issue because most add-on authors don't want their add-ons to be buggy. They want those bugs to be fixed, but it's very difficult to do so if you can't get into contact with the users that are facing the issue. Now, review sec the review section it can also be useful not only to just get a general grasp of how the add-on works and if it's a, a good add-on, but also to get some more uh, information about how to use the add-on, also some information about specific use cases that users might have come up with to use the add-on. So it can be quite interesting to browse through the ratings and just see how people, uh, what ideas people have come up with to use um, that add-on. Okay, let's go over to, to some more advanced topics. First of all, how to install add-ons manually. For some add-ons, you might have a way to download them outside of Anki Web. For instance, um, for image occlusion and some of my other add-ons, I also provide release downloads on GitHub. These can be useful um, if I, for instance, sometimes I upload a new version of my add-ons on GitHub and just wait for a week or two in order for people to test it before I can share it publicly on Anki Web. And if you want to install that version before it's publicly, publicly available, uh, you will have to do so manually. And the way you do this is pretty simple actually. You just have to download whatever file the add-on author provides. For instance, in this case, it's an archive. And um, having downloaded that, the only thing you really have to do is just place the add-on files inside Anki's add-on directory. You can um, open the add-on directory by going to Tools, Add-ons and clicking on Open Add-ons folder. And as soon as you've done that, you then just have to find whatever you've downloaded, whatever uh, add-on files you've downloaded. For instance, in case of an archive, you usually have to inst uh, um, you usually have several files that you have to copy over into the, the add-on directory. For instance, in this case, one dot py file and an additional add-on directory. And uh, as soon as you paste these into the add-ons folder, you just have to restart Anki and the add-on should then be installed, just like if you had installed it, installed it from Anki Web itself. So there we go, it's installed. And of course, conversely, if you want to remove an add-on, you can just head into the add-ons folder again and just find the files that belong to that add-on, remove them, and once again, as soon as you restart Anki, then that add-on should no longer be installed. Of course, you can also just use the normal delete feature in Anki itself, but in some cases, it might also be useful to remove the add-on and any remaining files manually. That's as far as the removal and installation is concerned. The other thing I wanted to um, showcases how to modify add-ons manually. This can be useful when configuring them. For instance, if we have the add-on here, um, we have this add-on right here, the editor tag hotkey add-on. This add-on allows you to define custom hotkeys that are assigned to specific tags. And in order to define these hotkeys, you have to edit the source code. And the way you do this is just by going to the add-on, highlighting the entry, and then clicking edit. This will launch a text editor window and in here you will then usually have find a um, configuration section for that add-on and instructions to go alongside with it. It's important that you read these instructions carefully because just one wrong character inside the source code can lead the add-on to fail 
Uh, so the error might no, no longer work if you configure it improperly. So make sure to both read the inline description in here, but also the description provided in the add-on page or the add-on readme file. Okay, as soon as you've modified something in here, for instance like this, you just have to click save and then restart Anki. And as soon as that's done, the add-on should then be um, available in its modified state. So your configuration changes will then have applied after restarting the or after restarting Anki. So there we go. One important thing about changes like this, because they apply to the add-on itself, uh, which means the actual add-on file, um, as soon as you update that add-on, your changes will be overwritten. So make sure to keep that in mind if you want to update your add-ons. If there are any configuration changes that you want to preserve across the update, it might be worthwhile to go into the editor section and just um, copy those changes before updating. So you could, for instance, go in here, copy this configuration part in here, then update the add-on. And as soon as that's updated, you could just go back into the editor, paste your configuration back in, and you should be set up. Okay, so that's as far as configuring add-ons con is concerned. Um, let's go over to the last point of the video, which is actually writing your own add-ons. And of course, I can't, I don't have the time here to just go over exactly how to learn how to write add-ons, but I do want to wanted to um, link you to a few resources where you can actually learn how to get started with Anki development. So Anki itself and Anki add-ons as well use Python as their programming language. And Python is fortunately one of the easiest languages to learn. It's great for beginners. And there are a lot of fantastic tutorials and um, other resources out there that will help you learn this programming language. One resource I can recommend is Code Academy. This is a pretty interactive tutorial where you just go over specific parts of the syntax and the um, tutorial will just guide you just from the very fundamentals right until writing your very first own app pretty much. Of course, there are many other tutorials out there as well. So if you are new to programming and new to Python, the best thing you can really do is just go to YouTube or Google, type in Python tutorials, and you will find a lot of great lists of different tutorials that you can um, consult in order to learn how to program in Python. As soon as you've got these fundamentals uh, down and as soon as, as you know your way around Python, the next step will be to read through the official add-on writing guide, which is this one right here. All of these links will also be available in the description, so make sure to check that out if you want to read up on this more. So this guide here will teach you how to actually um, interface with Anki, how to modify specific features, overwrite them with your own um, changes, and will just be a great introduction to understand how to use the things you've learned about Python in Anki itself. The third step, as soon as you've read this documentation, is to then just go and find add-ons that you're interested in and just read through the source code. Learn by example. That's pretty much the most, um, pretty much the fastest track to learning how to write add-ons really is just reading through other add-on code, understanding how the source code works, how it um, interfaces with Anki, etc. There are great. There are a lot of um, great um, repositories out there on GitHub with a lot of different add-ons which you can read through, and just find something you're interested in. Find an area that you want to modify, and find add-ons and actually modify this area as well. See how they work, and then use what you've learned to write your own add-ons. That's my advice. That's the most important advice I can give you, really. Okay, guys. I think that's as far as this. Um, video is concerned. The next videos in this series will be covering the node creation process. I want to introduce you to a few add-ons, which I think will greatly enhance the way that you add information to Anki. Until then, thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure to stay tuned to this channel. I will try to push out new videos in this series weekly. Um, until the next one, good luck with your studies and see you soon. Bye.